Hey everybody, welcome back to Texas Prepper Projects. And today we're gonna to talk about radios. A uh, hot topic in the prepper world and I'm gonna go through um, some radios I have. and I'm gonna give you my recommendation. Starting at the far end, this is a plain Jane AM FM Sony radio. Runs on two AA batteries and costs about 20 bucks. This is the beloved Baofeng. Um, it is a transmitter and a receiver on both two meters and 70 centimeters. It will receive FM and weather band. If you program it properly, it'll transmit on ham, FRS, GMRS, MERS, and depending upon what configuration you get, they're about 30 bucks. This is a wind up crank solar emergency radio. This one does AM, FM, weather band, and shortwave, sort of. Um, and it cranks up, it's got a solar panel, um, it's got a USB charger on the back for cell phones, and a cool little flashlight in the front. These are 30 or $40. This is the very first ham radio I ever bought. This is a Yezu VX7R. This is a tri-band, two meter, six meter, 70 centimeter. Um, it's waterproof. I've had this for like 12 years. It is indestructible. I have thrown this thing out the window and dropped it off roofs and it will not die. Um, they are discontinued. When you can find them, they're about $300. This is a Yezu uh, 857 all band, all mode ham radio. This will literally do everything from HF, which is shortwave, up to UHF, VHF. You can modify them to do other frequencies like the Baofeng, but this will literally transmit on essentially any common frequency known to mankind. They are discontinued. Um, when you can find them on the used market, they're about $700 thereabouts. So this is quite the gamut of stuff from $20 to $700. So what's my recommendation? What is the one thing I think that you should own on this table? And it's not what you think it is. The $20 no frills, plain Jane, AM, FM, Sony radio. Here's why. Yes, the Baofeng will receive FM. That is true. And yes, the Baofeng will transmit also on all sorts of frequencies that it necessarily shouldn't. We won't talk about legalities, but yes, this is a transmitter. And yes, this is a receiver. This will pick up weather. This will pick up FM. My problem is, is it's not very good at any of those things. The receiver on this is well known to be very deaf. It doesn't pick up signals very well. The quality control on these things, or lack thereof, is fairly legendary. And more importantly, there's just not real, there's a, there's a million charging options for this, but none of them are real good. There's a rechargeable battery in here. This happens to be the extended life battery. And on the extended life battery, there's this external power port. And you can come out of this with USB. So the argument could be made that you can plug this into a solar panel and recharge it forever and have a transmitter and a receiver. But now that's other stuff you have to buy. On two AA batteries, this thing runs forever. Normal, plain old, two AA batteries. Plain old, two plain AA batteries. This thing runs forever, forever on two AA batteries. And you don't need a solar panel, you just put two more AA batteries in it and you keep on going. This was actually a present from a friend and God bless her for thinking of Prepper Scott with this. Um, same thing, it, it does a lot of things but doesn't do any of them very well. The crank is plastic, 
and you have to crank this thing for like 30 minutes to get two minutes of play time. Same thing with the solar panel. See how tiny the solar panel is? You have to put it out in the sun for like 20 hours for like an hour's worth of run time. The solar panel is just way undersized. The weather band, since the Baofeng has this, and so does this. In my experience, um, in trying to use weather radios in emergency situations, they've never been very good. You know, they, they cover too wide of an area and they repeat the same information over and over and over again. So the weather radios don't really, don't do much for me as a prepper. Oh, and the uh, USB charger port on the side is not enough output current to charge modern cell phones. This was a thing like eight or 10 years ago. This is not gonna charge your iPhone or your tablet or your laptop unless you crank this thing until your arm falls off. Um, it's, it, it was a novelty when it came out. It has not caught up with the times. My VX7R, I love this thing as a ham. Um, I love its durability, but it has the same kind of issues. You can charge it from 12 volts on older models, so I could plug this into a solar system. Um, I've got great transmit capabilities. This has great wide receive capabilities. But in the blizzard and in other emergencies, I have found the ham radio to be fairly lacking. Um, I, when I was trying to use this during the freeze, I ended up pulling out this and listening to a local radio station because the ham traffic really wasn't giving me much to work with. The all band, all mode, do everything, talk to anyone radio is great. And it's a lot of fun if you know how to use it and if you have the room to set up a fairly large antenna to be able to utilize the HF capabilities. I have other videos somewhere over here about my inverted V uh, and NFED half wave antennas that are 40 to 60 feet long in my backyard to do HF. Or you could do a Wolf River coil vertical, which are 150-ish dollars, and it's not reliable. HF is hitting the same person over and over again. While it is possible, is difficult. The tech prepper, and I'll link to his channel below, has a series called No Random Contacts. And there's a lot of work that goes in trying to re repeatedly hit the same person over distance over and over and over again. You have to use a specific frequency at a specific time. So great rig for a ham. Um, I really like this rig because it does everything. I can do data modes on it. But as a prepper radio, you really need to commit to the ham stuff if you're gonna get into a rig like this. The idea that someone can just buy this and not get their license and when the zombies come marching, they can just pull it out and plug it in and talk around the world like at the end of the Independence Day movie is just not reality. I've been a ham for 13 years, I've been a general for three years, and I'm still trying to figure it out. It is not plug and play. It's not that easy. You gotta really work at it. So, again, out of all these things, this is my recommendation. They're $20, they're cheap, they're dependable, and unlike ham radio repeaters and other equipment, a lot of FM radio stations have backup generators and have backup power equipment. So to get reliable, consistent, current, up-to-date information in all the hurricanes I was in in Florida and the emergencies we had in Texas, I have been stunned at how good plain old FM radio was. My local rock station kept news and information going better than my $300 ham radio. <laughs> go figure, go figure that. And when I talked about this online, someone said, oh yes, my Baofeng has FM in it also. Okay, yes, this is true. Yes, this technically has most of the capability of this. Just this does it better. It's the same price or a little less expensive the batteries are easier to replace and to recharge. Um, it's got a nicer speaker on it. The receive sensitivity on it is better. The batteries are gonna last longer. So do one thing, do one thing really well, 
and do one thing really cheaply. So if we talk about radio gear and communications, there was one thing I think you should own, it would be this. If you're gonna get into the transmitting, I personally would stay away from this and go to a Midland GMRS or get your ham license and get into some real ham gear. So there's my two cents for you today. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Hey, thanks.